Welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is Laura Kelly, president and owner of The Handwork Studio. Laura, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm God, so excited to this, be here. Uh, this is very for exciting. Both of us. Yes, you. exactly. I mean, from the classroom to the studio, yes. um, literally, like studio, studio. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we met many, many moons ago, um, and you know, over the years, you must have had many significant moments, but I'm wondering if you'll take myself and the audience back to a significant moment that really influenced you to be the entrepreneur that you are today. So I think I was born <laughs> an entrepreneur. It's born. just... It's just, because it just, I just sort of always knew that I would do that. Mm -hmm. It's just that there have been milestones along the way that pushed me forward into making it become a reality. So mm -hmm. I would say when I started the business, I ran it much like a hobby. Mm -hmm. But then my husband went through a career change in, back in 2004. And it was at that point, not knowing you know, what the future was going to hold, I really had to say, okay, it's time to make a decision. Am I gonna run this as a business or am I gonna just continue it like a hobby? And I think that was th the real turning point in my mind mm -hmm. where um, I got serious when I stopped paying everybody else and realized I have to start really, start paying myself and um, you know, making a real go of it. Well, let's freeze frame there just for a moment because sure. some of the folks may know you and others may say, a hobby, but it's the handwork studio. I mean, I thought handworks and needleworks, those are all hobbies. So tell us, take sure. us back to what it is that you do and sure. who you serve sure. and kind of how that transition happened. So uh, we specialize in needle arts. Uh, we mm -hmm. teach knitting, crocheting, machine sewing to children ages five to 15. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's not because I myself am a crafter per se, mm -hmm. but it was something that I wanted for my kids. And so that's how we got started. I saw this in the school that they were attending, and when we left the school, you know, I brought it back home to my kitchen table. Mm. So we did that for two years, um, mm. while the marketing person in me uh, test marketed the waters to see if that this was something that uh, my friends um, and other mothers like myself would be interested in. So, um, you know, we serve currently year-round. We're out of Narberth, Pennsylvania. But in the summertime, camp has become a significant part of our business. And so we are this summer in 10 states. And 10 states? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Wow. From the kitchen table to the eastern seaboard. To the eastern seaboard. <laughs> that That's table right. really stretches. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and we're in 43 locations within those wow. 10 states. So, wow. uh, and I'm proud to say we've had kids who started at my kitchen table when they were five years old. Um, we've had them work for us for years, and now they're all in college and um, so it's been it's been quite the journey Wow very significant when you think about the business itself it has evolved I mean you mentioned it it went from a hobby to a business and now it, it really is a scalable enterprise um, how does that how does that happen um, one day at a time Mm -hmm. one tiny step at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always sort of equate it to running a marathon. You don't wake up one day and say, I'm gonna run a marathon today. You know, what you do is you go for a walk and then a brisk walk and then you run a mile and then three and then months later, you know, suddenly you're there um, doing it. And it's really just the ability to get up and keep going on mm -hmm. the days that you don't wanna go. Um, and that's how you get there. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's true with any idea. It's, you know, it's not that I have any special qualities or anything. It's just, you just got to hang in there and keep believing in yourself and pushing forward. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually you'll get there. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you originally saw this in your children's school and then you brought it home. What did you bring with you today and why did you bring these items? Right. So um, I think, uh, so what I brought were some samples of some of the things that kids make. Mm. And the, I know I wanted to show them is because I'm so incredibly proud of what kids are really capable of doing under the right conditions. Mm. And so, um, you know, the first, you know, the first uh, project that I bring, and this is for our younger kids. This is our mm -hmm. five-year-olds, five you know, wow. started this. 
And so this is a kind of a project where we don't sit around and say, oh, I'm going to knit a scarf today, because children would get completely bored by that. But what we do, do is we say we're going to make a mermaid. And so they learn to embroider the face. Mm. They learn to crochet the little uh, bikini top. Oh. They learn to whip stitch the body of the mermaid. Then th th perhaps they might be braiding some of the hair. Mm. And then uh, this little technique here is called needle felting, and then they needle felt. And so this is how we teach, is through um, you know the creation of a, of a product like this, of a project like this, where we combine all of them. And kids get excited about it, mm -hmm. uh, making a project like that. Then our older kids, you know, we move them into um, clothing making, and this is in our machine sewing program. So here's an example of one of our summer summer projects that we made with the kids. And so you can see, you oh. know, it's an adorable, very um, complicated, right? Right? Isn't I mean, that all impressive? The stitching, right? Exactly. Oh my goodness! Exactly. And so you know, kids will come to us with no sewing experience. Mm -hmm. And they may not make this the first summer they're with us, but they're definitely making this the second summer that they're with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of projects. And then and then another fun thing that we might do in year-round classes with the kids is, because, um, uh, you know, like machine sewing. Uh, again, more machine sewing, where kids are making their own backpacks, and they're just so... Um, zippers? Zip, not only does it zipper, but zippers. it's beautifully lined. Wow. And so I'm proud that's of our pretty, kids. Yeah, that's pretty complex. Yeah. I mean, I've done sewing before. Putting in zippers requires discipline and planning and, you know, right. Yeah. And the straps and all the good stuff that goes with it. So yeah. I'm just really, I'm just, um, I'm just proud of what the kids can accomplish. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, we try to keep things that are on trend mm -hmm. um, and modern for them that they're interested in making. Mm -hmm. The kids are the ones that are part of the program, and the parents are the ones that make the decision to put their child into camp. How do you get the parents involved, or to what degree do you get the parents involved in the whole process? So the p parents are not involved necessarily in the camps and classes themselves. We obviously communicate with the parents. As a parent, it sort of gave me um, you know, a leg up on, on to speak their language. Mm. So knowing what it was that I was looking for with my children, I was looking for activities that were non-competitive. I was mm. looking for activities that were um, n use of no technology. Um, I was looking for something where that they could be social and they could sit and uh, make friendships because as these you know kids are sitting around oh, the table and stitching, right. there's twice as much talking that's happening than stitching that's going on. And so I knew it resonated with my heart, and so I knew then that I think I could communicate with the mothers to let them know, um, you know what the importance of what we were doing mm -hmm. and what those things bring to their kids. You mentioned results. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the fact that children that started at your kitchen table are now in college. What are some of the... the things that people say, that the children say, after a summer camp experience or after an after school experience. What do they tell you? What do they tell your staff? Right, well, and, and it's immediate. You can see it. You can mm. see it as they're grabbing the thing and they're running up to their mother <laughs> at the end of class and going, look, look what I made, right? So mm -hmm. so the gratification um, is just, just right there. And they're so proud. Um, and the, the mothers are just, they can't believe that their kids are capable of doing mm -hmm. the things that they're doing. So um, we always say as instructors, what we want to do is make the experience a fun experience mm -hmm. and that it's not about perfection. So we're not having them rip mm -hmm. things out over time oh. because what we think is if we do that too many times, they'll, they'll get discouraged. Okay. But instead, if they're having fun and it has a little hole, they don't really care, but they'll come back. Okay. And it's in that coming back is where they're really learning the skills. Wow, that's really powerful. I mean, I, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you mentioned non-competitive, and there's so many parents that want their children to participate in sports and learn how to be competitive. And then you talk about not necessarily striving for perfection, and <laughs> then children developing social skills. I mean, are you a psychologist? What's the? <laughs> <laughs> are you onto something here? Is yeah. there? A, yeah. That's I've never thought of it in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. We do tell 
um, our teachers that are instructors, counselors, mm -hmm. that 90% of what they are doing probably is psychology related mm -hmm. in that there's so much discussion that's going around the table that you, we have to sort of m monitor it. Mm -hmm. Kids are sometimes, and oh. it, right, oh. like adults, you know, mm. kids will also be like, oh, this is terrible. Oh, I stink at this. I'm terrible at it. And so we try to redirect that kind of talk and we try mm -hmm. to frame it in a much more positive way. Mm -hmm. and we say, no, it's not that you're terrible at it. You just haven't learned it. Mm -hmm. If you knew how to do it, you wouldn't be coming here. <laughs> right. So that's the, that's where we're using psychology with the kids, you know. Mm -hmm. Or also, um, you know, if they're talking, we don't allow them to talk about a child who's not at the table, like sort mm -hmm. of in the third person. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, just some good just good old-fashioned manners. manners. Oh my goodness, shocking. Oh, no. That's right. an added bonus. <laughs> <laughs> right, you think you come to get manners at the Hanover Studio. Wow, what's what's next for you and the Handwork Studio? So we're looking to be a national presence. Whoa. You know? oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, From Narberth to national. Narberth to national. Mm -hmm. it sounds like wow. a road tour, right? It does, it does. Um, I believe and it's been proven that this concept has legs. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm doing now is learning, really, mm -hmm. how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I take an idea and um, build the infrastructure? Mm -hmm. So that's what's next. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Lots of fun in education. Lots of fun in education. Mm -hmm. Well, um, focus and energy. Yes. Those, that's, um, I think that's, uh, one of the key points, what you put your attention on, you know, will flourish. Mm -hmm. And so I try not to get distracted by the shiny objects <laughs> of adult uh, classes right. or other things. Yeah, just right. do what we do and be the best mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. Mm. You mentioned earlier that you didn't necessarily get into this being a knitter or a crocheter, and yet you are influencing the lives of so many children. It's a little ironic. Mm -hmm. um, now, in the 15 years I've been doing this, mm -hmm. I can say I can craft as well as any eight-year-old out there. <laughs> so I have learned I a it. few things um, during, uh, during the process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Laura, Laura, thank you so much for being on the show. I just... Um, I, I really love the tactile. I mean, this is so cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and these are the things that the kids will hold on to for life. Mm -hmm. Because they made them. Because they made them. And they're significant. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not just small little projects. That's a significant project they have in it their hands. It is. Yeah. Totally cool. Thank you. Well, Laura, thank you for being our guest on Significant TV. I look forward to hearing more about From Narberth to National. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's now in my mind. And I just want to really congratulate you on your journey. Well, you thank you. You're making a difference. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of that journey from uh, the beginning. From the beginning. Yes. From the classroom. And yeah. for the opportunity to let me share my story today. Oh, you're so welcome. Great. And I look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you. So, again, once again, significant stories in all shapes and sizes and forms. Our guest this afternoon has been Laura Kelly, president and owner of the Handwork Studio. And she can be found in Narberth and in 10 states across the Eastern Seaboard. And um, just again, look forward to seeing the work of your students and whatever you create. Thank you, happy Thank to you. share it. Thanks again.